Dragon Ball Xenoverse is a new take on the old Dragon Ball story. We've all seen Goku beat Frieza's ass before, but never in the kind of way that this game shows it. You start off by creating your own character that will become a part of the Time Patrol, which is a squad that goes back in time to correct the evil changes taking place in the Dragon Ball Z story. I found the idea of this plot twist extremely refreshing as I was actually a part of the fights that some of my favorite Z fighters were involved in. So Goku still beats Frieza's ass, but not before I stepped in and beat the crap out of him too. Character customization is pretty basic and it takes some of the styles and looks from many different Dragon Ball Z characters. The five different races that you can choose from brings a massive amount of variety to the basic abilities and customization items that are available. You're able to upgrade and change your character stats to best suit your playstyle and also dress them up to look any way that you please. To start off the game you find yourself in a futuristic city of Toki Toki where other time patrollers meet up and start off on their missions. It's a small hub world but it works great for interacting with other players and getting into all the different parts of the game. But it also brings me to another point about this game. This game seems to have taken some inspiration from Destiny in the way that there is such a hub-like environment just like the tower. One other element that seems to be similar is the rate of skill drops within the game. There are lots of skills and ultimate attacks to collect so you can customize your moveset, but it can take many tries just to get a specific skill from the quest you unlock it in. It's a frustrating part of the game that requires a lot of grinding. Oh, did I say grinding? That reminds me of yet another part of the game. Some of the story missions that you need to beat are very difficult to get through when you're underleveled. This leads to giant walls within the gameplay that have you stop the story completely just to go back and train to raise your level a little higher. Most people see this as a flaw, and I can't lie about the fact that I don't like grinding in video games. Others have argued that this is just one of the parts of the game that adds a little bit to the replay value. Combat in this game is much better than in most of the recent games. It's very fast paced and feels satisfying to pull off long combos and put your hard earned skills to the test. However, some parts of combat are a little broken with seemingly endless combos, a lack of a parrying system, and the chance for anyone with Super Saiyan ability to be able to spam special techniques for about a minute. The level is capped at 80, which shouldn't be difficult to get to after beating the entire story, all the parallel quests, and unlocking the characters and extra skills that you need for your character. But one thing you don't want to forget when playing this game is to set up a mentor while you do all of these things. Mentors are main Dragon Ball Z characters that teach you their own moves and spar with you from time to time as well. It's an easy way to get moves like Vegeta's Gallic Gun or Krillin's Destructo Disc. Overall, this game is a huge relief compared to the last two Dragon Ball games to be released, and it brings so much variety and new content into a seemingly dying video game series. If any of you love Dragon Ball and don't mind spending a little time training your character and upgrading them, then I would totally recommend that you buy this game. And it may not be as good as Tenkaichi 3 was, or for some, Budokai 3, but it's still one of the best Dragon Ball Z games to date for the newer consoles. But hey, if you have any of your own opinions on the game, then put them in the comment section down below. And also don't forget to like this video and subscribe. So for now, this is me, Next Level Otaku, saying stay gold, and I'll see you guys later. That make you feel what?